Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Slay the Spire from Contention Games. Slay the Spire is a 1-4 to four player roguelike deck building game based on, well, based on Slay the Spire the video game, which is based on the styling of a card game while being a video game. There's a lot going on here, and it's impossible to, to touch upon this, this game without comparing it to Slay the Spire. But let's go ahead and dive into this. Like I said already, this is a 1-4 to four player deck building experience. This is a prototype, everything you see here, rules, components, all that stuff subject to change. Uh, this is on Kickstarter. I'll have a link to it down below. You can check that out. And let's go ahead and try to talk about this. I'm going to mostly explain this as if you're not familiar with the video game, but inherently throughout this review, I will talk about, well, the video game and this and back and forth and all that. So if you're not already aware, this is a video game. You There's apps, there's Steam, there's all these kinds of places. I think you can get it on, on Nintendo Switch. I, I don't know all the places you can get it, but you can get it in a lot of places. This is the tabletop implementation of the game, which is, like I said already, is already a deck building experience. In Slay the Spire, you're going through a variety of acts in the game. You're going through, generally in the video game, you're going through three acts where you're going to go on this chart, moving along a little bit of journey, having different types of encounters along the way. You're going to have encounters with various baddies that you have to defeat. You have to tackle these monsters and go through a deck building aspect of trying to deal damage and pre preserve your health as much as possible as you take down the enemies. You're going to have a variety of random encounters as well, a little kind of choices you make. You see a donut and a cupcake and an ice cream and you pick that. You're talking to uh, faces on the wall. You see a treasure and you want to grab it. There's all these different kinds of random encounters you're going to have along the way. Then there's going to be the elite monsters you have to deal with, which are basically like regular monsters, except they actually hurt you a whole lot more. And then finally, at the end of each act, you have the boss over here. You have the boss, which you're going to go ahead and flip it over and deal with whatever boss that you have to kind of figure out how to take it down before it takes you down. The elite monsters and the bosses tend to be the thing that really provide the challenge although the rest of the uh, experiences along the way do serve to knock down your health. You see, this is a progression game. This is a game which you're going through a, and you're trying to build out your deck and improve your stats and gather more relics and do what you need to do to grow along the way, being mindful of the fact that your health does not automatically heal at the end of each encounter. If a small little monster represents only the small amount of threat that represents a single loss to your life, well that's a single loss to your life that will cascade over to the next scenarios and you have to be mindful of 10 encounters, losing one life apiece it does mean you're dead when you're playing through this experience. And so you're going through that process. You're going to start with your starter, starter deck, you're going to have 10 cards, you're going to have those in your hand, then you're going to slowly, slowly add to your deck as the game goes on. At the end of each encounter, you're going to add cards to your deck. There's going to be multiple options and encounters and merchants and all these different things you can do that build up cards, that add more cards, that remove cards from your deck. Like I said already, this is a deck building experience. You have the opportunity to go ahead and upgrade cards in your deck, removing a card from a sleeve and upgrading it to get a better stat on that card. Something that it does better, it costs less, it does more. There's going to be ways to upgrade your deck, upgrade your stats, gather relics, just progressively become bigger, better, and more powerful in the game. You're also playing as one of four characters over here we have set up uh, over here we have the uh the defect set up right now we also have the the watcher over here we have the ironclad and the silent four different characters with vastly different play styles totally different decks totally different upgrade decks totally different rare cards all these things you can do as you try to figure out which character you want to move through this arc generally a game of slay the spire has three acts to it it's going to potentially vary depending on what you get your hands on but there's multiple acts through it and again at the end of each act you will finally fully heal at the end of a boss at the end of a full boss, but then you have to dive into the next boss and be mindful of the fact that the enemies you're facing are stronger. The boss you're facing is stronger. You've been leveling up the whole time, but so has everything else. The entire game is a roguelike progression system. You start with a deck of 10 cards, you go through encounter after encounter after encounter after encounter, resting here, interacting there, dealing with the merchant over there, grabbing a little merchant stall as you move the cards into play, figure out how to populate it with the various relics and potions and cards you have the opportunity to go ahead and buy, uh, weeding cards from your deck in a variety of encounters, building, upgrading, and developing who you are as a, as a character while trying not to die along the way. That's what Slay the Spire, the board game, is. It's deck building. Deck building with progression and a whole lot of upgrading along the experience. The Slay the Spire, the video game, is basically the same thing. And Slay the Spire, the board game, they're very, the card game, the board game, they're very tied together in terms of the way that they... Well, we'll talk about the comparison stuff as we dive more towards the end of the review, but I guess let's go ahead and dive into the actual review. Now that we've covered what the game is, how it goes, although, you know what, let's cover how an actual encounter with a monster goes. I'll show you some of that over there, because generally across the course of the game, you'll be moving your boot, you'll have an encounter fight over here, and you'll go ahead and play a monster to your character row over here. You're going to play a monster, the monster may come into play with different summons, so in this case we have to go ahead and summon three gremlins to add to the board, so we'll remove this boss counter, we'll add three gremlins along with it because of the summon stack, and then we'll go ahead and put down different health cubes on the gremlins to track their health 
as you try to figure out how to take them out. From there, you're going to go ahead and shuffle your deck. You're going to figure out what you need to shuffle over here. Go ahead and draw five cards, or every character has their own potential differences. So, for instance, the uh, the Silent draws extra cards at the start of battle. Each character comes with their own uh, built-in aspects. Over here, we have the Defect. It's going to channel a Lightning. They manage these various reserves and these cubes you're trying to play with. And they're going to draw the hand of five cards and figure out what cards to play using their three energy per round by default. Right now, we have an enemy doing two damage to us, an enemy who's going to be charging up doing nothing this round, but three damage to us next round. This enemy is doing one and two, so we currently have five damage coming our way, unless we can figure out how to prevent that. So let's go ahead and spend two energy, two energy over here, to go ahead and spend these two cards, one, two, and we're going to go ahead and take out this guy here. So this guy's going to go from two down to zero. We're taking him out. We just prevented two more damage to us at the end of this round. From there, we don't have a ton of options. But we could go ahead and play a defend card and simply build up, spend our last energy, play a defend, build up our block, and then take a look at what's coming our way. Right now we'll have two damage, one damage, and nothing happening because this guy's just charging up. So they're going to do three damage to us, negated by our one block, which means we'll go ahead and lose two health. We'll also take a weakness token, which is going to hurt us when we try to actually deal well with the, the various characters next round. We're going to go ahead and shuffle it up. Let's put these cards into our discard pile. We'll shuffle up five more cards, go to the next round, and try to figure out whether we can uh, take them out this round. So we're going to go ahead, move energy to three. Our block resets. Block is always lost at the end of each round. I'm going to go ahead and figure out what we're doing now. We have some solid cards over here. We've got some really powerful cards, but only if we can actually do everything we want. We can go ahead and do an all for one attack. Put all zero cost cards into your hand. That wouldn't be bad, but we don't have much. We can go ahead. Oh, at the end of the combat, we channel a lightning. So we would have dealt one more damage to one of these characters here. So let's go ahead and do that. Take it out. And then we're going to go ahead and try to figure out what we can do to take these people out. I think we'll go ahead and play defragment over here. That's going to have our end of turn effects are going to do plus one damage. So all of our end of turn effects, which are orbs, are going to do a plus one damage. We're going to play that. And that's a power card that will stay in play. And then we'll play strike over here and go ahead and take out this guy with the strike. Actually, that won't do anything, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and forget that strike. Let's channel a lightning. Because the problem is a strike would be negated by our weak. Weak would deal one less damage, and so our strike would have no effect. So instead, we're going to go ahead and do uh, uh, play channel lightning and put a lightning into play so we can go ahead and do that. End of turn effects will hit. We'll deal a damage to each person, but in this case, we're actually going to deal two damage because our end of turn effects gets plus one. So we're going to deal two damage, which means a collective four damage, which means I think we're going to try to take this guy out down to zero so he can't hit us for three. The problem is we're still dealing with these other enemies over here, and these enemies are going to deal a collective three to us, which is not great because we can't really handle that. So we're going to go one, two, three, down to four. We're really not having a great combat there. We're going to go ahead and put our cards away, pull up five more cards, and continue the process of being beat down upon. Well, we'll finish this in a second. We're going to have our cards here. I'm trying to figure out what to do here, but right now we know we're dealing a collective four damage, so it actually doesn't matter at this point because each of these orbs, thanks to defragment, is going to actually deal two damage each, which means we can actually go ahead and not do anything and finally take those guys out, at which point we'll get money, a potion, and some card rewards as well, adding more cards to our deck. And that is a typical combat in Slay the Spire. You're trying to deal with these enemies, trying to take them down. The problem is, I just walked away from that combat winning it but losing six health. This goes to the nature of that progression system, of the fact that as you play through the game, you are slowly dying. How fast and slow the whole dying aspect goes is, is variable, but you are slowly dying, and you need to be mindful of your health as you go through it. Some other encounters you'll have is you'll have elite bosses, which are basically just more powerful bosses that have much harder stats to, be, to deal with, much more devastating effects, and you'll have a whole bunch of these random encounters, which are the little question marks, where you have to deal with an ancient trap over here, an ancient temple, you, you don't see any traps, gain a, a relic over here, lose a, a, a health point, and lose an additional health point per player who chose this option before you. Over here we grab one of these, and we have a ninja scroll. Once per combat, you can go ahead and do two attacks, treating each attack as a separate zero cost attack. So you have these augments, these relics that you can add to your board, and you have these particularly powerful boss relics when you eventually take down the bosses and move to the next scenarios, and these give you strong effects. This ectoplasm gives us an extra energy return. Now we have four energy a turn, but we can't gain gold. There's a trade-off to these. Lots of these give you strong effects helping your deck, helping you build your engine, but possibly with a degree of choice and consequence along the way. And that's basically set this fire. Build your deck, try to figure out how to take down the enemy, try to figure out how to do so as efficiently as possible, dying as little or as infrequently as possible along the way. And from there, we can dive into our review, starting off with ease of play. Rulebook is really easy to dive into, although understand I'm coming at that from the stance of knowing how to play Slay the Spire, the video game. So everything going on here was fairly intuitive to me. This is a deck building game with Slay the Spire going on. It was not hard for me to pick up at all, but it does have that aspect of, of I, I know the system, so I'm a little biased towards it. As far as game time, table space, table space is not that bad. 
game time is roughly roughly half hour per player per act that can move a little faster in solo play i think although the truth is even with multiple players because you can play simultaneously to a degree it does mean that it's not a full half hour so it varies maybe call it 30 minutes for the first person per act and maybe 15 minutes for each additional person per act so not that long but it does depend on how many acts you're playing as far as what i don't like and can see others not liking there's a whole lot of things but the first starting baseline is this feels like slay the spire if you like Slay the Spire, this feels like Slay the Spire. Towards the end of this review, you can check the timestamps down below. There'll be a little section as to why you should get this game if you like the video game, or why you shouldn't get this game if you like the video game. But I like the video game, and I love the video game. Forget, like, I love the video game. I love Slay the Spire. I have loved it for a long, long time, and this feels like Slay the Spire. This gives me a tabletop version of that game, managing to incorporate more elements than I thought would be possible through rolling a die every turn and activating a variety of effects, enemies, uh, various relics, lots of things in the game that are normally random. You roll a single die every turn, and that single die determines the randomization of everything, and it's a system that works very well and very cleanly. You also have a degree of randomization ar around this board over here and how these tokens go onto a map that has some degree of fixed and some degree of random to give you that progression towards the end of the act. You can have the various uh, upgrades, the Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, this prototype over here does only have act one in it but i have played through all three arcs and all three all three acts and i played through all four characters and multiple degrees of ascension through playing through this on tabletop simulator so i played this both physically and also experienced the whole game that's going on here there's a lot going on over here but it captures the magic and the feel of slay the spire not without compromises there are some compromises but for the most part it manages to do so with minimal degree of compromises with more setup and teardown than you have compared to slay the spire but less setup and teardown than you have compared to most other other games, most of the tabletop games in the genre. So it does all that, so as a fan of Slay the Spire, I like the game. As far as why do I like Slay the Spire to begin with, it has that deck building roguelike progression. It has deck building, which I generally like. It has deck weeding, deck upgrading, adding cards, all those things I like. It has a degree of tableau building as you add these cards, these relics, these potions. Potions are one-time use, but you're going to have these relics, the potions, the boss relics. You're going to have all these things you're adding to your experience. You have unique characters, four different characters with four completely different decks, completely different playstyles, all giving you different ways to go through the game. You're going to run through the act. You'll hit a, ch a challenge. You get to the second boss. You die. You restart. Maybe the same character, maybe a different character. You try to figure out what it is you can do differently next time, how you can build your deck in different ways. Every character has different ways you can build out their decks, different play styles to them, and different ways you can lean into one play style over the next. There's always a reason to continue to want to play this game. It has that sense of progression. It has that sense of upgrade. It has that sense of just satisfaction as you move from act to act to act. And there's a ton of variability baked into the experience from the cards you will barely ever see time and time again. There are so many cards in this game, so many rare cards, so many boss relics. There's so much content in this game. And you won't see most of it on a single play, on two plays, on three and four and five, six plays. It will take a lot before you really see everything this game has to offer. And there's the cool variety of ways you can build your character. And doing that across multiple characters, again, just a lot of opportunities here and then the ascension the ascension levels give you these harder challenges you find the game too easy you've started to master it great we'll start having a little less health start having harder bosses harder elite monsters start dealing with having less potions all these options as far as the ways you can manage the difficulty level of the experience to suit what you get over and then lastly and an important aspect is this is slay the spire with cooperative play slay the spire the video game doesn't really have cooperative play it doesn't there's a mod somewhere i've never tried it. i don't know exactly how it works but there's some sort of mod and some system i don't know but the base slay the spire doesn't have cooperative play and this has cooperative play baked into it when you have the monsters coming out you deal to each row every player dealing with their row and eventually kind of teaming up when and where necessary to help each other to figure out how to tackle the things thrown at you together this gives you the slay the spire experience but with the ability to sit down around a table with people who like either slay the spire or just like the genre that it's in and being able to experience it all together and work together it has the slay the spire experience with cooperative play as far as what i don't like there's really two things the first is going directly off the cooperative play the cooperative play, by design, is a little bit easier than solo. Meaning, as you go through the experiences, the boss fights and the elite battles, those all scale beautifully. But the individual fights against monsters that pop up, those are a little easier to take on the monsters in co-op play, because as I finish my row, I can help you with yours. Which means one of the things that happens in Slay the Spire, one of the things you might not like about Slay the Spire, is the fact that sometimes you just get to the third level of whatever, you try to challenge a monster, and through a sequence of bad draws or just whatever going on, it just doesn't work out well. The timing of your block, don't line up with the timing of their attack, something happens and you die. But the problem is when you're playing a cooperatively or the problem or the 
the, the pro or the con when you're playing it cooperatively is that's less likely to happen because as I'm going through the game that my me having a bad hand might happen but as less we're both having bad hands at the same time generally there's more room for mitigation as we work together to help each other's weaknesses and take out the enemies and so cooperative play is a drop easier for those regular encounters for the elites and the boss monsters they scale very they, they scale well and they have that aspect now again if you don't like that you could just up the difficulty level as I've started to do because I like that tenseness I like getting to a level 3 monster and feeling that sense of death I like having the sense of death every time I walk into an encounter and then feeling powerful as I just charge through it and figure out what I need to do so call play does have that slight aspect although you can mitigate and manage around it and then secondly I'll say that while I think that the game does an amazing experience Slay the Spire this this board game here this card game board game I think it does an amazing experience at managing most of the things that I would have thought were hard for a Slay the Spire board game to capture from the video game without dealing with all the maintenance. I think it does an amazing job. The one area that I do feel the sense of pain where I'm like, and this is the reason it's a board game and not the video game, is when I'm finished playing and I have to tear down all the cards. And I have to go through my deck and un-upgrade every single card I've upgraded and separate out which cards go to what piles. That's the only area where the maintenance on the player versus playing the video game is an area that I finally start to feel. To be very clear, it is still better than most board games you're playing, but that's the only time when I'm really playing the Slay the Spire board game and feeling the difference. As far as I can see others not liking, first of all, the, the Defect and the Watcher are not the perfect implementations of their characters online. The Silent and the Ironclad, I think all the characters are a little bit different than what the online implementation of the game is, of the video game, but I would say the Silent and the Ironclad do a great job of feeling almost exactly like the Silent and the Ironclad. The Defect and the Watcher are the areas where I feel a bit of a change to the way they're done online versus the way they're done in the tabletop version. Not a big change, and I still love playing as them, but I will say that that is one area where I think I felt a drop more difference from the experience they give. Uh, secondly from that is, I mentioned this already, I touched upon it, but sometimes you just get wiped by a low level monster. Sometimes you just draw a monster and the cards don't align and you just get wiped by whatever is tackling you. That can happen. I don't mind it. To me, I shuffle, I reset, I go to the next thing, I start again, and I go through that sense of progression that I enjoy from this game. If everything was easy, then it wouldn't be uh, enjoyable to actually co go through it. It's, it's those deaths and those losses that make you feel like, oh, I want to do it again. I want to power through and get to that boss. So I don't mind the losses, but might be frustrating when it happens to you. And then also there's a lack of healing between missions. Between every encounter there's a lack of healing which again adds to that progression, that sense of it's a full on encounter and adventure but you may find it frustrating to have your health slowly tick down as there's not much you can do around it. Although if you do want to do a thing about it I recommend playing as the Ironclad who heals one in between each round. And then lastly if you love Slay the Spire this may feel like the Slay the Spire experience and this may give you the same joy that Slay the Spire gives me which for me it does. But you may find that there are elements of this where you find yourself just thinking, I'd rather just play Slay of the Spire, the video game. That's absolutely fair. It's always a choice, which brings us to the uh, final extra section of this review, which is not present in my usual reviews, which is why should you get this or not get this as far as Slay of the Spire, the video game versus Slay of the Spire, the board game. And I think the short answer is mostly comes down to whether you prefer physical versus digital games, as well as the cooperative play. I think those are the main reasons to get this if you are a fan of Slay the Spire and you're questioning why do you want this. I think for the most part, this gives me the feel of Slay the Spire. This gives me the same sense, the same journey. It does an excellent job of capturing all that magic. And despite all that, you might say, great, but I like the magic of Slay the Spire, the video game. Why should I get this? And I think you have to be compelled by one of those two things. I think you either have to be compelled by a tabletop physical experience, which I certainly am. I don't mind video games. I don't mind board games turning to video games, but I always prefer the physical tabletop version and that holds true here to a large degree. Despite some of the small compromises made, I'd rather sit down and just play this myself, either even solo. I'd rather play it solo here than play it on a screen. I like the physical manifestation of, well, gaming. And the secondly is cooperative play. Cooperative play is going to be another aspect where if you want to play Slay the Spire with friends, if you want to enjoy that social element of gaming while enjoying Slay the Spire, I think this will give this to you, give that to you in a way that the video game just won't do. As far as final thoughts on Slay the Spire, I think this was an excellent job. An excellent job at convincing me to love a game I already love, if that makes sense. I already love Slay the Spire the video game. I've loved it for years. That was never the question. For me, when I first heard Slay the Spire announced, I thought they wouldn't be able to capture that same feel. That would feel way too much like a compromise no matter what they actually did, and it doesn't. 
For the most part, it doesn't. For the most part, it feels like the Slay the Spire experience. There are changes made. There are absolutely changes. If you play this, if you haven't played Slay the Spire in six months and you play this, I think you'll find yourself just feeling like it's Slay the Spire. But if you're playing them back to back, I think there are changes. There are noticeable changes and differences that they've done to give you the experience while not compromising on the difference between tabletop and digital. And there are differences that have to be accounted for. But they've done so in a way that has me absolutely compelled to dive into this again and again and again to play this just as much, if not more, as I have played the digital version of it. I think they've done a fantastic job. I love Slay the Spire, and I love the adapt adaptation of it. For me, this is a 4.5 out of 5. Some small aspects of it that aren't perfect, but overall, a, a solidly enjoyable game that I really, really like, and I'm happy to continue to play as much as I possibly can. As far as the other game recommendations, first of all, Star Realms. Star Realms, if you're looking for a deck building, if you enjoy deck building, you want to see more out there, Star Realms is a very different game, but it does give you the fast, punchy feel that any individual round of Slay the Spire will give you. Very different in terms of the overall progression and sense of uh, depth that they have, but if you like one, there's decent reason to like the other. And if you want something with deck building and a lot more character progression, although, again, very different experiences, uh, Mage Knight is going to go vastly off into the other end of giving you a very heavy, very, very experiential game, a lot of rules overhead, a lot going on, but a very rewarding deck building experience that can be played solo with other players as you figure out how to uh, progress your way through the world of Mage Knight in that game. In any case, then until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.